Well, I think it's safe to say that Battlefield is 100% back in business. Just look at the likes on the Battlefield 2042 reveal trailer versus the likes and the dislikes on the Battlefield 5 reveal trailer. It's not really a fair comparison, but it just shows how much excitement there is for the new Battlefield game. Unfortunately, despite the trailer being absolutely amazing, it did raise some questions from my side and some concerns as well, but I'm gonna start with the positives. The first thing that you see and something that I think is absolutely perfect is the fact that it is set in modern or near future time. This is in my opinion the perfect setting for a Battlefield game because it gives DICE a lot of freedom in terms of you know weapons, gadgets, gameplay and everything, and lore even, without it being too much over the top like you can have for example with a real futuristic setting. And it is not bound to the actual events that happened in for example World War 1 and World War 2. Now one big thing that is a first for the franchise is the addition of specialists. Basically specialists will now replace the traditional class system but you will still have certain specialists performing specific tasks. So for example you will still have medics if I'm not mistaken like Maria Fox. She is a specialist with medic capabilities. She has a syringe gun that can revive people from a distance. So technically, you still have classes in Battlefield 2042, but they are now expanded on and are primarily bound to their specialty and traits rather than weapons, because you can now pretty much choose any gun on any specialist. And I don't really know how to feel about that to be honest, because with the traditional class system, you had to consider the pros and cons of each class. For example, when you are choosing between a medic class and a recon class, you know, one has a sniper rifle and with the other you can heal yourself, you can't do both. Now actually, you can basically choose the medic specialist and a sniper rifle at the same time. At least I think that's how it works. This might turn out great, but it could also be very tough to balance, we'll see. Another thing I don't really like about the specialist system, at least from what I've seen so far, is that you have like pre-made characters, you know, with their own stories and their own names and stuff like that. And that might be great to have for an expanded roster, but I would have preferred it if you could simply choose the specialties for your own soldier. That way you don't really play as a certain character, but more as your own soldier. That would have been cool in my opinion, but it's honestly too soon to really complain about that. So let's just wait and see, because so far it looks like you will have a ton of cosmetic customization options, so it doesn't really matter. Now, one of the biggest bombshells that have been dropped, and the thing that might be a big problem for some people, is the lack of a single player campaign. This time, DICE decided to drop the campaign to focus solely on the multiplayer. Now, before I tell you what I personally think of it, I want to know what your thoughts are on this. Let me know down below, are you upset that there is no single player campaign this time around, or are you actually happy? For me, it's kind of 50-50. I 100% understand why this might be the right move for this game. Let's be honest, Battlefield campaigns haven't been all that great for the longest time, and you know, the multiplayer is the bread and butter of the whole franchise. However, I think if you are paying for a full price triple A shooter, then a single player campaign is kind of part of it, you know, it, it's kind of a part of the package. I don't think the answer to a streak of bad campaigns is to drop it all together. Call of Duty is a great example. In Black Ops 4, we didn't get a single player campaign and a lot of people actually complained about this, but then the following game, Modern Warfare, came out with an amazing campaign and actually got high praise for it. So I'm kind of split. That being said, I did hear that the story of the game will be tied within the multiplayer. I imagine it's kind of like what Fortnite is doing. Some more things that I actually really, really like about this game is the crazy weather system and the insane sandbox feeling of the game. Of course, I haven't played it yet, but it sure looks like they had the sandbox aspect of the Battlefield franchise at the very top of their priority list. With the tornadoes, you can actually get sucked into the air, including while you're in a vehicle, and you can then hop out and use your wingsuit to traverse the map better and stuff like that. You also have the Webster McKay specialist, he has a grappling hook to get to certain spots. And you know, stuff like that, it just screams fun. Like I said, I think this is gonna be the most sandbox type Battlefield game ever, and I don't know, I just can't wait for stuff like that. The maps are also a big part of that sandbox feeling. With 128 players, the maps will be bigger than ever before. Breakaway is the name of the biggest map in this game, and I think it's gonna be the biggest map in the history of the franchise as well. 
In these larger maps, capture points are now within sector. So instead of having objective A, B, and C, and D, you have objective one, two, and three in the first sector, and then the B objectives in the second sector and so on. And you can only capture a sector once you captured all the objectives within that specific sector. So it definitely looks like it's all gonna be much bigger in scope. Some other new things include the gun plus system, which is basically a way to change attachments from your gun on the fly. A lot of people compared it to Crisis, and this sounds interesting but i can't really see it being all that important similar to the fortification system in battlefield 5 i think this is gonna be more of a gimmick but obviously i could be totally wrong of course we'll see in battlefield 2042 you can now also play against ai bots which is actually pretty cool for a number of reasons for example low populated regions won't be forced to sit alone in an empty server Rounds can now start faster and it can be a great way to get familiar with the game for new players. There are also now vehicle drops as well. I can imagine if you are stranded somewhere at the edge of the biggest map in the game, you know, rather than walking or redeploying, you can simply call in a quad bike for example or maybe something else. Sounds pretty interesting. And apart from a bunch of other cool stuff, now I want to talk specifically about things that actually worry me a little bit. Things that we don't know yet and things that if they are not implemented correctly on release, well, that's not gonna be good. So from the top of my head, I wanna know how the minimap situation is gonna be like. More specifically, do you appear on the enemy's minimap when firing without a suppressor like in Battlefield 4, or is it gonna be like Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 where you don't appear on the enemy's minimap at all when firing with or without a suppressed gun? Personally, I would like it to be something like Star Wars Battlefront 2, where you have this direction indicator on your minimap when firing without a suppressor, and then if you do fire a suppressor, you don't appear at all. This way, a suppressor can still have its uses, but at the same time, your location won't be accurately pinpointed on the enemy's minimap when you're firing without a suppressor. Next up is the spotting system. This is also relevant to the minimap question I had, but this time I'm specifically talking about 3D spotting. They kind of got rid of shooting Doritos in Battlefield 5, but I'm not really sure what to think of it. Maybe with specific gadgets or something like that you can spot people in Battlefield 2042. Let me know what you would like to see. This next one is something that hasn't been mentioned at all and this is actually my biggest fear. Skill based matchmaking. It is extremely notorious in Modern Warfare and Warzone and pretty much universally hated by all gamers. I really, 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 really really don't want any kind of match manipulation in this game except for some team balancing of course i just really don't want to sweat the entire time like in call of duty another thing that hasn't really been talked about is crossplay now since the previous generation of consoles will have a lighter version of the game i'm pretty sure that that version won't have any kind of crossplay at all though with the next gen versions of the game that may be a different story because the population on next gen is way smaller Crossplay seems like a more obvious choice. However, because crossplay is such a big selling point nowadays, I think that if it had crossplay, we would have been told by now. So I don't think that it will have crossplay at launch, but if it does, I certainly hope that you can choose to not be matched with PC players if you are on console. Next up, attrition. I'm pretty sure that it won't be in the game, but it's not officially confirmed if I'm not mistaken. Anything from low ammo to not fully regenerating your health Get that crap out of here. I hate it in Battlefield 5 when I won a gunfight and I was then left with only 30 health permanently. Really, really annoying stuff. I don't want attrition in the next Battlefield game. Then how about fortifications? It's not overly present in Battlefield 5 and at first, I didn't really like it to be in the game, but I don't really mind it anymore and it can actually be kind of cool sometimes. So I wonder if we will see something similar in Battlefield 2042. And last but not least, obviously I'm gonna talk about gun customization. We already know that you can change out attachments on the fly, which is pretty cool, but the gun customization itself should at least be similar to Modern Warfare, if not better. So I'm really hoping for an insane amount of content and customization options across the board. And that's about it for the video guys, but before you go, I really wanna hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. So first off, what did you think of the trailer? And more importantly, what do you think about the game with all the information that is currently out there? I personally am very, very excited to create some epic content. So if you don't want to miss out on anything, then be sure to subscribe with notifications on and check my socials in the description. Please drop a like on this video if you enjoyed. And with that being said, I see you guys next time.